How um, is everybody? Thought I would come live for my kids get back home and the after school chaos happens. Give some people a few minutes, see if anyone's around and gonna join us live. If you are here, say hello. If you are watching the replay, Still say hello. We want to connect with you. This has been like my song today. On repeat. Hey, Rita, how are you? Hey, Anita, how are you? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. Hey, Trisha. I keep seeing all the lights you are posting about. I got a flight. I don't know if now is the time to be coming though. Now you have me a little scared. Hey, Miss Emma. I hope you guys got home okay. I bet your little one is feeling good. Thank you for the baby snuggles today. It like totally warms my heart when I get to snuggle little tiny, tiny babies. So. I'm coming, I want to chat uh, all things hormone health. So I did a workshop in the Glebe Monday night on essential oils for hormone health, and it was so, so fantastic. There was a great um, range of women in different kind of aspects in their life, all the way from young 30s up to about 70, and we dove into hormone health. My bag of everything I took has been sitting beside my desk, and I thought, you know what, before I put everything away and all those oils back in my bathroom on the shelf, I want to share with you guys, because I know some of you were interested, and you may not live in the direct area, so you can't come to a class live in person, or you know there were scheduling conflicts, so I wanted to be able to get you the information. So um, I'm going to share some different things when it comes to hormone health. Like always, I really, really want to emphasize that when it comes to our wellness and we are looking at our wellness um, and how we're feeling within our bodies, mind, body, and spirit, we really, really, really need to be coming at this from a full circle approach. We want to be making sure that we are sleeping well, that we're getting out and moving, that we're, you know, feeding our bodies with like super nutritious food, um, you know, that we are really taking care of ourselves the best we can. I know when it comes to hormone health, though, it can be really challenging sometimes to get a good night's sleep for a variety of different reasons. And then we start to create this vicious circle that's really, really hard to get out of. And so, you know, we can pull from different wellness aspects in order to support us for full body health. I think, you know, or I don't think, I know, we set ourselves up for more wellness and better success with whatever it is we're trying to reach towards um, within our health goals. I, for those of you who don't know me, I have three kids. I had three babies in five years and my youngest is now four and it has been like a wild ride for me in those four years when it comes to hormone health. Um, there's been a lot of challenges and you know things start to stabilize, we overcome some things and then you know something else gets thrown in. So you know you might be um, in the postpartum stage, you might be kind of a little bit past the postpartum stage, but still within the childbearing years. You might be perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal. Um, something super, super interesting that I find a lot of people don't know is, do you know menopause really only marks one day? And so what that one day of menopause is, is when it has been exactly one year since you have last had a period. So, you know, even, you know, I talk to a lot of women and they'll say, oh, you know, I'm going through menopause and it's because... You know, they're thinking like my cycle's irregular and it's either spaced out or um, my period's like really close back to back to back to back. Um, and so that's still perimenopause. Menopause is really only one, it marks one day, um, one year after 
our last period. And then anything after that is postmenopausal. So um, I thought that was super, super cool. I want to share with you this book. So The Essential Oil Hormone Solution by Marisa, Mar Marisa, Marisa Snyder. You may recognize um, Marisa's name because she also wrote um, The Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils. So I refer to that book a lot too. So she is fantastic. What I love about this book is it really gives you practical ways to increase our wellness and support ourselves, mind, body, spirit, when it comes to our hormones. So there's a ton of diffuser blends in here, roller bottle blends, um, different like food and recipes and lots and lots of ideas. So this is a great book and you can find this on Amazon. Um, those within Canada, it is not like Every Indigo store I have visited, it's been there. Those in the U.S., I've seen it all over at Barnes & Noble. So um, lots of different places that you're able to get it. And this book is really great for everyone. So, you know, I would say like 20 um, all the way up to like 100, okay? So there's tons of great info in there. Let's jump in. And let's talk a little bit about using essential oils to help us from a physical stress standpoint. So when we become stressed, and I like as women, let's be honest, uh, most of our stress levels are probably a little bit higher than they need to be because we have so many moving parts going on in our life. And when we have that physical stress, our body, our cortisol levels increase and we get into that fight or flight mode. When we get into that fight or flight mode and our cortisol levels really start to rise and increase, that can then really start to affect our sleep. It can really start to affect our mood. It can really start to affect um, kind of the foods we're grabbing or gravitating towards, which then also has a full other effect on its own, right? So let's talk about some different oils um, that are really, really fantastic to help us from a physical standpoint. So, you know, we could look at deep blue to help us color any um, aches and pains that way. Physically as well, sometimes people will, it'll manifest in different skin issues. So I've had clients before who their skin gets really itchy and irritated. Oftentimes that's because of stress that is causing that. So something like lavender can be really soothing for that. Um, who here is like a teeth grinder or a jaw clencher? Which is a huge, huge, huge issue um, because it affects so much of our health. If you're jaw clenching or if you're a teeth grinder, um, I have been for the last year or so, which has been really interesting to me. Um, my dentist was the one who pointed it out and it kind of put a lot of pieces to the puzzle together of, you know, how I was feeling different ways and some headaches I was getting, couldn't figure out why. So, you know, if you are a jaw clencher or a teeth grinder, magnolia is super, super nice um, to put on throughout. Adding in some copaiba would be really nice as well. Um, so that's, you know, another sometimes physical symptom that we get when it comes to stress. Um, some people, it's hair loss. And so I struggled a lot with that postpartum after my fourth. And it's still like ongoing. It's getting a little bit better. Um, but, you know, we look at hair loss and supporting our hair growth, we're looking at rosemary, we're looking at geranium. Those are two really powerful, great oils to be able to add into your shampoo. Um, but hair loss is another sign of physical stress. And then we look at emotional and mental stress because when we are feeling stress from the inside, you may not be visible, those signs and symptoms, but we can feel them, right? We know they're there. They're, they're kind of like the invisible stressors which when we are feeling that way, it also has a great effect on our hormone health. And, you know, when that starts to kind of go off balance, that emotional, mental stress that impacts overall hormone health, again, we get into that vicious cycle and wheel. So, you know, some great ones for that, bergamot. Bergamot is really uplifting. It's great for um, 
helping ease and anxious feelings. Cedar wood is another great one to help support for mental, emotional, spiritual health. Um, it really helps to ground us. It really helps to soothe. Um, it's really great for rest and relaxation. We look at, let me just see here. I, when my kids get home, I am putting them to work labeling some of the top of these bottles that are not labeled. Um, we look at lavender. So, you know, we know lavender is great for sleep, relaxation, for resting, um, for helping um, rejuvenate. We look at frankincense. Frankincense is the king of oils, and it's the king of oils for a reason because it supports us so well mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So, you know, from an emotional, mental standpoint, frankincense is really great at helping to clear the mind. It's really great at soothing. It's really great at helping us feel rooted and connected to the earth. Um, you know, when you're in that fight or flight stance and you feel like you just want to escape your body because of whatever it is that's going on, frankincense is going to help you settle into that but not just settle in and feel like, oh my God, I got to buckle in for this ride, but help to soothe you throughout that as well. Um, so those are some really great ones. Wild orange. Wild orange is fantastic at uplifting our spirits, our mood to give us energy. It's really great to help pull us out of any sort of funks. Um, so wild orange is a great one for that too. Now, when we are feeling mentally, emotional, spiritual, health, physical um, stress, when those sort of things are happening, we know, as I mentioned, it usually has a great impact on our sleep. And then when we sleep really crappy, then we're like moody and we don't feel good, right, from the inside out. So it's like never, never ending. So let's talk about ways um, that we can help combat fatigue because who feels like they get that, like, energy slump midday? If you were someone who was not sleeping uh, really, really well, and, you know, it's not always like the hours of sleep. People will say, like, hey, you got to sleep in a full eight hours. I know people that function really, really well on six hours of sleep, and those six hours, though, are, like, super high-quality sleep. So if you were someone who sleeps eight, ten hours a night, and you were waking up still tired, and you're getting headaches, and there's issues, you need to, you know, look at what else is going on. Oftentimes, you are not getting that deep rest continuously that you need. So, you know, when you're getting that afternoon slump, I know a lot of people like to maybe, like, go and run and have a nap, but if you have a nap, usually it affects the sleep at night, unless you have a baby. If you have a baby or little kids, you are, like, so sleep-deprived, nap and sleep when you can okay but I'm talking for like those of us who are kind of out of that stage so let's talk about some different things that can help us support us from that so of course we have peppermint right how many people reach and grab for peppermint when they need that uplifting it's really great when combined with wild orange um, any of our citruses are also really really fantastic so we have um, our lemon, we have our lime, our wild orange, grapefruit. Those are all fantastic. Eucalyptus is another fantastic one um, to help beat that fatigue and uplift. This has been my go-to lately, rosemary. Rosemary it's just smells so great. It's really great at helping combat fatigue, but it's also really great for, like, brain focus and awareness. So um, you will also notice... Those who are maybe kind of riding this like hormonal health roller coaster, um, it's very, very common that your concentration and your memory and your focus starts to lessen. You will also see uh, maybe you're already there or maybe you know others who have gone through that. It's very common during perimenopause to start to have those similar um effects going on in your body. It can be challenging to remember things, to concentrate, to focus. So rosemary is really, really fantastic for that, as well as basil. So they both work similarly. I much prefer the aroma of rosemary over basil, but again, to each their own and what you feel most called towards using. Now let's talk about sleep. Okay, so we've talked about physical stress, emotional, mental stress, We've talked about how to combat that fatigue if we're needing to feel energized, but 
how many people are feeling like they get the most energy of their day between like 9 and 11 at night, right? So you're like really, oh, that's my husband calling. I'm going to turn that off for now. Um, you know, so you you feel like you get this like burst of energy and then it's really, really hard to turn your mind off. And when it's really, really hard to turn your mind off, it's really challenging to get to sleep and then get that deep quality sleep that you need. So let's dive into some different things that I love for sleep health. He's going to keep calling now until I pick up the phone. So we're going to let him, here we go. All right. Um, of course, we have lavender, frankincense. Let's talk about cedar wood. I love, 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 love lavender and cedar wood together, or lavender and Siberian fir. Bergamot is really, really great for sleep and relaxation and getting that restorative sleep. Um, juniper berry. Do you know anyone who gets um, night terrors? Juniper berry is a great one for that. Sandalwood is also really, really nice for sleep relaxation. Um, Roman chamomile, vetiver, ylang ylang. So those are all ones that can really help to support us um, when it comes to sleep and relaxation. Now, who here feels like they have in your or feels like or knows that they have an irregular menstrual cycle. I'm really curious as to how many people track their cycle. So there's a couple great apps you can get for your phone if you are not already tracking your cycle. Um, there's a couple great apps. If you want them, you know, I can write them in the comments later and let you know. These are fantastic because they will help you keep track of your cycle. What is also really interesting is they will let you keep track of your signs and symptoms and things you're feeling, which is really, really important when you are trying to pin down from a hormonal health perspective what is going on with your body. And so, you know, if you're getting the same sort of signs and symptoms around like day 20 to 25 or the first like, you know, day like 12 to 16, if you're getting these similar symptoms throughout and you track them, it's going to be much easier for you to go to your healthcare provider and say, look, between this day and this day within my cycle, I constantly get every month these sort of symptoms, and that's going to help them um, really kind of narrow down what they want to focus on in order to be able to help you from a hormonal health standpoint. What happens a lot of time is, as women, we go into our healthcare provider and we assume they know everything and that they're going to be able to like help us right away. We need to remember that we are the advocates for our own bodies. And so, you know, like healthcare providers are absolutely amazing, the majority of them, but they're not inside our body. So it's going to take them longer to like go through a list of things and trial and error sometimes to see what's going to really well, really work and support you. So if you are not already tracking your cycle, I highly, highly recommend um, that you do that. For anyone who is finding that they're having irregular cycles and you know that like you're not in the perimenopause, like deep into that perimenopausal state, um, some things that might help you. The first thing is lifelong vitality. If you are not on lifelong vitality, those are doTERRA's supplements. So they have the omegas, they have um, the microplex um, A to Z. Um, and what's the third? It's completely escaped my mind right now, um, alpha CRS. So if you're not taking the combo of those three, you need to be taking those to create a strong foundational health. Without a strong foundation, like think of it as a house. If you don't have a strong foundation in your house, it doesn't matter what else you build into your daily wellness protocol, like everything's gonna keep falling out flat. So you need to make sure that you have that strong foundation doTERRA's lifelong vitality the trio vitamin pack believe it or not is actually their number one seller and so people think like well it's not essential oils it's their number one product because it works so freaking well it actually has a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you haven't tried llb yet you need to like order it get on it um because you can get that money back guarantee but doTERRA stands behind it so much and the product speaks for itself so, so, so highly that, you know, 
they can offer the 30 day back money guarantee because people don't ask for it. They love it so much and they fall in love with it. So a lot of these issues we're talking about, you are going to notice a huge change when you get on that lifelong vitality as that like strong foundational um, aspect. Myself, I was anemic for years. I tried everything. I worked with our local pharmacist and she was like, I've given you everything. Everything either didn't work or it would make me so nauseous that I couldn't function. Lifelong vitality, game changer. Like the, dif the difference with lifelong vitality than everything else that you're gonna find over the counter is that lifelong vitality is bioavailable. So what that means is our body absorbs it and knows what to do with it. All the other vitamins you get are so full of synthetics that we just end up peeing or pooping it out because our body doesn't know how to actually use it. It's not real food and nutrients and vitamins. It's synthetic stuff that's shoved into a into like a pill casing for us, okay? So check out the lifelong vitality. Okay, next thing with your regular menstrual cycles is clary sage. So if you are pregnant, you need to avoid clary sage. Why? Because it's like a uterine tonic. So you want to avoid clary sage if you're pregnant until you are actually in labor, and then it can actually be really quite helpful. Um, but clary sage is, sorry, I just heard a, heard a school bus. wasn't my school bus. Um, clary sage is really, really fantastic for hormonal health and supporting our uterus. Um, another one for that is um, Clary Calm. So Clary Sage is in the Clary Calm blend. So Clary Calm is a roll-on blend of oils and the Clary Sage is in there. So Clary Calm is really great at helping um, stabilize irregular menstrual cycles. Clary Calm is also really, really helpful um, if you have menstrual cramps. So it can be really soothing for that. The other thing that goes well with the Clary Calm if you have menstrual cramps is deep blue rug. So many people don't reach for this baby. You know, we'll reach for, for like sore shoulders, neck or whatnot, but not menstrual cramps. So here's what I want you to do the next time you are feeling menstrual cramps. Put on your Clary Calm, put on your deep blue over top. It's gonna to be a total saver for you, okay? So really, really supportive, um, full body health. Now, who gets hormonal headaches? This is another reason why I want you to get a period tracking app so you can track your cycle and you can see if those hormones are happening at certain times. You might be getting like a really big dip in estrogen or your progesterone at different times in your cycle when you shouldn't be. So when you look at hormonal headaches, I want you to try to figure out like what is the cause of that and some different ways that can help you once that hormonal headache presents itself. Um, you're gonna reach for your frankincense, you're gonna reach for your, where are we here? Where's my friend, Mr. Peppermint? Boop, boop, boop. Mr. Peppermint, frankincense, peppermint. Um, then, if you don't have the deep blue polyphenol complex, I want you to get those, think of those as your all natural Tylenol or Advil as well as your Copa Iba soft gels. So headaches, two deep blue polyphenols, two Copaiba soft gels with your frankincense and your peppermint applied topically. Deep blue polyphenol complex is not the same as deep blue oil. Please do not ingest deep blue essential oil. The deep blue polyphenol complex, slightly different. You can ingest it. It comes in a pill form, okay? So um, throughout my cycle, or any sort of hormonal headaches, two deep blue polyphenol complex, two Copaiba soft gels. I take that a few times throughout the day as needed. Um, it really, really, really helps, okay? So that is fantastic for your hormonal headaches. All right, what else do I have here? I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Ooh, sugar cravings. Who else is finding they are getting sugar cravings at different times in their cycle? So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the Smart and Sassy Gum is fantastic. It's called like Slim and Sassy Gum. Um, you can get the oil too. The oil in Canada is called Smart and Sassy because that's a much nicer name than Slim and Sassy. Um, but the Slim and Sassy gum you can get in the U.S. back office. It's really great at helping to curb uh, sugar cravings. Some other great ones is cassia, cinnamon bark, and 
black pepper. Um, grapefruit is another one that's really, really great. Okay, so you can put a couple drops of that into some water. You can drink that throughout the day. That's going to really help to curb um, those sugar cravings. Sometimes I will just take a little bit of cinnamon to the roof of my mouth as well, which can be really, really helpful. So um, that is going to help with sort of um, getting rid of those cravings, stabilizing blood sugar a little bit more, which can also help help if you're feeling like you're getting a lot of fluctuation of your weight throughout your cycle where it's coming up and back down and stabilizing and up again um, that can be from that as well and uh, you know just helping to stabilize our blood sugar it's a really 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 big thing so those oils can be helpful for that as, as well as peppermint spearmint um, those are also great go-to's now let's talk about low libido yes I'm going to go there. Low libido. Um, you're like, did she really just say that? So, variety of different reasons. Sometimes, like, you're just tired, right? And is that that hormonal cycle that's going on? Is it because you're in, like, the depths of, like, early days motherhood with a newborn? Is it because you're taking care of, like, sick family members? There's a lot of different reasons why we could um, be feeling tired. A lot of times though, the low libido is from a hormonal health standpoint. So we talk about low libido, some really great oils that can be helpful for that. Neroli. Neroli is great at helping to boost our libido. Jasmine is great. Jasmine's known as like a really sensual oil. Rose, the queen of oils, is fantastic. And so, you know, as I share these oils, you might be being like, okay, but do I need to put them all on all the places to get kind of, you know, heightened in the mood? What I want you to do is I want you to smell them and I want you to pick the ones that you are feeling most called towards, okay? Now, you know, like, I get it, like smelling jasmine is not going to be like, I'm ready to go, <laughs> let's let's go get it on. There's like other aspects that are happening, right? So a lot of times for us as women, things like, I know for me, like the house has to be clean. You guys, like my husband's like, who cares about the house? But for me, in order to like turn my brain off from like the everyday stuff, like the house needs to be tiny and there can't be like this long to-do list and sometimes it takes us you know you might need to go have a nice hot bath and relax a little bit and read or whatever it happens to be like there's other pieces of the puzzle um, but from a hormonal health standpoint Jasmine, Neroli, um, Rose, um, Cinnamon like the cinnamon like think of those spicy oils okay so cinnamon Cassia, if you don't have passion, passion's another great one. So those sort of oils to diffuse and apply topically um, are going to be really, really helpful to increase our, our libido. Um, so those are some suggestions there. And then the last thing I want to talk about is not fully last thing, but two last things kind of together, kind of not. So let's talk about hot flashes. So hot flashes, um, part of perimenopause. Some, you know, goes into postmenopause for most women for a little bit too. So when we talk about those hot flashes, we'll talk about peppermint and spearmint. Um, one second. That is my oven, and it's going to continue to go off. So peppermint, spearmint, really, really great at cooling the body. Um, so I would put some on the back of the neck roof of the mouth. You can also make a nice little spray with some water and peppermint or spearmint to help cool your body down as well. Try to be proactive. So like if you're in this stage, try to keep your body in a cooler state throughout. Um, so a lot of times too, you'll get night sweats, which can happen like postpartum period, can happen because of different hormonal health reasons, um, coming into perimenopause, menopause. So if you are someone who is getting night sweat, the peppermint experiment is going to be very helpful too. Clary Sage is our best friend. Again, really helpful for that as well as the Clary Calm. Um, so if you were getting night sweats, hot flashes, I'd be putting Clary Calm onto the bottom of my feet before I get into bed. I'd be putting some peppermint on the back of my neck and I'd have some peppermint spray close by on my nightside table to use as needed throughout the night. So those are some 
of my hormonal health hacks, things that I have seen work for other people, things that I use personally in my home for me. And I hope that maybe you got some little tidbits of information in here too. So like always, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below and uh, we'd be happy to answer them for you. All right, everyone. See you later.